We're going to talk about 802.1x now, and I'm going to start off talking about the wired side of this, but 802.1x definitely has relevance to wireless security, and we will get into that in subsequent lessons. But it's important to talk about 802.1x because it's really a component that allows you to restrict access to your network infrastructure. Now, one of the big reasons for implementing 802.1x is to prevent somebody from just walking up to one of your network jacks in your facilities, plugging in with a rogue device, in other words, a device that you don't have any control over, and just really going to town on your network from within your network. And often this is a problem where you've got conference rooms where people from outside of your company are coming in. If there are network jacks for whatever reason in waiting areas where people are sitting, this is a potential problem. So 802.1x is a way to make sure that you authenticate at the very lowest layers of the protocol stack before you give any sort of access whatsoever. So what we've got here is a diagram of how you might actually implement 802.1x. Now you've got a client here on the left-hand side and it uses the extensible authentication protocol in order to connect to an authenticator that is going to pass your authentication request or pass your credentials off to an authentication server. Typically, that would be radius or diameter, and we'll talk a little bit more about radius and a little bit about diameter in subsequent lessons as well. But radius is a protocol that allows somebody to authenticate passing in credentials, and the radius server really is kind of agnostic with regards to how you would actually do the authentication. In other words, the radius server may actually just sit in front of the real authentication server. So an active directory server, for example, may sit behind a radius server and the radius server is just taking the standard request using the radius protocol and then passing that off to say an active directory server that sits behind. So we've got a standard way of doing this authentication so that users can pass in credentials before they are allowed access to the network. So that sounds very much like a wired sort of mechanism, except that there are definitely implementations, and we will talk a little bit about those in subsequent lessons, but there are definitely implementations for wireless networks. So we have talked about authenticators, we've talked about supplicants and authentication servers, you can see here the typical authentication progression. We are going to do an initialization again. This is kind of a wired side thing where the port you are plugging into is set to an unauthorized state. Then you initiate authentication, you do some negotiation, and finally, hopefully, you get some authentication as well. So there are definitely cases where this is relevant on a wireless network, and we will see cases where you can authenticate to a radius server from your wireless access point, and if somebody hasn't authenticated, they don't get access to your network. That's what 802.1x is used for. It's an IEEE standard that allows you to open and close network connections based on whether the user has authenticated to the network or not.